Hey, what is up? This is Adam with the Cloud Automation Blog with a video on uh, what a, what an orchestration engine is and what it what it does, what its function is. So, the term orchestration, it it uh, for lack of a better term, it gets confused or it gets very jumbled um, when you start talking to different parties. Um, the tools I'm going to talk about are really I would consider the core orchestration tools. But you could talk to somebody like Chef or Puppet or Ansible or Salt or even, you know, the configuration management tools. And, th and they'll say, well, you know, we can do orchestration. Um, or you might talk to like the app side of the house uh, or you're on the app side of the house and you use a tool like Team City or Jenkins or Hudson or, or Urban Code, um, which have it, they have orchestration, you know, features. But when when you you know, when you talk about going out to 15 different systems within a, you know, within a business or or you want to talk to the public cloud and you want to talk to some resources on the on the private cloud um, or you have a dynamic request that might scale up or scale down um, those configuration management tools that's not what they're meant for at least not yet um, and the same with the application uh, automation tools uh, the, the said Jenkins and Hudson's and urban codes uh, again their application deployment build pipeline tools CICD tools however you want to classify them there are some orchestration pieces to them but the core orchestration, infrastructure, application. These really can do anything and everything because you can write. Um, so these are kind of the out of the box uh, integrations on the right of System Center Orchestrator, on VRO, um, the library, there's a ton here. These can talk to all those systems. There are, um, there are Jenkins plugins for VRO. There are plugins for ILO3, ILO4, UCS Manager, you name the, the systems, these are the tools that you'd use to orchestrate all of those those disparate pieces, Active Directory, IPAM Solutions, IPS IDS, Monitoring Backup, Public Cloud, on and on and on. These are the tools that would orchestrate those tasks. So what is an orchestration engine? It's a tool. It's, it's a tool that will allow you to connect disparate pieces uh, of systems, of APIs, of logic, um, usually something that a human could do. They could, you know, type, type in a web address, um, log into, you know, a, a web GUI, let's say an email portal, um, and then actually pull data back from that, do something with that data and maybe pass it on to another API or web portal, um, or, or there's some more logic within that, uh, within the data that, that was pulled from those said two or three web portals. So the example I'm going to, I'm going to just run through real quick is, is, is a weather API, uh, example. And what we're looking at right now is, as I said, system center orchestrator. So on the left, you can see the run books. I have some, I just, oh, I just downloaded some examples, uh, just to look, make this look a little bit more full, but the, the get weather is what we're really looking at right now. And what you'll see is there's some type of a browser, you know, a folder structure, uh, throughout the windows as I go through them. And then there'll be some type of a library. And what's really cool is the manufacturer of the software is actually written integrations or there's integrations throughout the community. So a couple of these I have downloaded from um, the SCORE community. But what we're looking at right here is very out of the box. So it's initialize data, and invoke REST service, and then return data. And another thing that will be very common throughout all four is there's some type of a debugging agent, a de debugging service. So this one's called Runbook Tester. Um, I can click Runbook Tester. You know, I can, I can click Run. It's going to look for an input, which the input is the zip code. Click OK. It's going to run through it so you can see there's a little debug log down here. I can click show details and I can scroll down on this and actually look at the return. So you can see the return right there. I'm going to jump over to VRealize Orchestrator, you know, a very similar tool in the exact same workflow. So it's just a, a get weather and a little bit different approach. So instead of having like an initialized parameters, there are actually attributes that are nested within the workflow itself. But then there's also an inputs tab, and that's where an a end user would actually input data. And then the schema itself, you can see, is a little bit simpler. But that's because I can actually do some scripting here. So if I if I click that little i, um, I can actually see that all the code that that um, is happening within the scriptable task. So I have inputs there, the API key, and the REST host, which were the attribute, and the actual zip code, which was the input. Very similar here. A little debugger. I can click that guy. I can enter the zip code. I can click submit. And you can see the variables and the log. So the same thing, you know, content is string. You can actually see the output there. If I jump over to another system, very similar again, you're going to see a lot of these are all very similar. This is HP operations orchestration. Now th this one's very visual. So there is no, if I jump back to uh, VMware's vRealize orchestrator, I can close out of the debugger. I can go back to get weather. 
Um, it's literally inputs and outputs, nested attributes, and then I can do whatever I want with that. But a lot of it's code. So a lot of it is, you know, I, I have inputs here. I can actually output things. But the scripting, a lot of it's scripting. It's, it's trying to figure out, which isn't a bad or good thing. It's just whatever you like. Um, what's nice, one thing that's very, very nice about HPO is it's very visual and they have a ton of out of the box uh, operations, it's what they call them. So if I go to library over here and I go to operations, um, I mean, you name it, you can just do, actually I'm looking for the utility operators. Um, you name it, I mean, it's, it's all, it's more or less you pass something in and it spits it out. So an example here, you know, very same thing. Um, I can actually debug this. I'm going to click yes to save. This is, I did a Windows update, so just ignore this. Uh, subversion crashes and then relaunches every time. So I can hit play, but again, very similar. You're going to see an input. I'm going to input the zip code. I'm going to click continue. You're going to see some debugging going on. And it says the temperature in Beverly Hills is 66.33 today. So I can click OK. Again, very similar. You're going to see all of the, all of the outputs in uh, flow debug variables that, that happen throughout that. And the last one I'm going to cover is ServiceNow Orchestrator. So if I go to ServiceNow Orchestrator, again, this one, uh, very common things you're gonna see is there's gonna be some type of an input, there's gonna be a design canvas, so we're looking at the design canvas, canvas now with HPOO. This is the design canvas with System Center Orchestrator. So right here, this is the design canvas. Um, and there's gonna be some type of uh, computation and API REST call. Uh, maybe some parsing on that data and that's all that logic I spoke of earlier in the video and then there's gonna be that output that that pop-up that says um, you know here's your results which in this case I, I'm just capturing the temperature on a couple of these workflows but again very similar here I, I have my workflow the get weather rest API call I can hit play on this I can enter that zip code I can click start So blue means successful, but if I actually click back and I go over here and I go to all workflow contacts, ServiceNow is a little bit different. And I'm gonna have four other videos of actually how I did these. And it's really just how to get started. Um, they're, they're all very different when you actually dig into the, the meat of them. Um, some like, you know, System Center Orchestrator, you're gonna right click to reference a variable that you've already set versus uh, vRealize uh, uh, orchestration. You actually have to pass that variable in and then reference it within the, the, the code, the JavaScript code. So very different. I'm going to have four videos of actually how I did this and, and to get started. But just coming back to the ServiceNow piece that I will have a, that I will have a video on, as I just said. If I click this, uh, this workflow context is what they call it. So we can go right here. We can see the workflow log and it's that same response. Hey, thank you for watching my video. Hopefully this, this gave you a good idea of what an orchestration engine is and a very, very basic example of what it can do. Um, if you'd like to know more information about uh, System Center Orchestrator, HPOO, um, Scorch, or System Center Orchestrator, or ServiceNow uh, Orchestration, I'll have four other videos on, on and I'll, go, I'll dive deeper into how I created these workflows. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Have a great day.